All right. You're welcome. All right. Welcome to Wolverine Baptist Church. Awesome. Second service, uh, Wolverine Baptist Church. Glad in each and every one of you here. The uh, theme for next week's food, if you weren't here or uh, weren't paying attention as I interrupt your fellowship downstairs, is uh, uh, Memorial Day cookout. So um, my wife and I could uh, purchase and commit to some of the hamburgers and hot dogs as well. But if you want to tell me you can bring some or we've got some hamburger buns already downstairs, correct? We have buns downstairs. If you ladies or gentlemen want to go see what buns we do have frozen downstairs. And then just all the fixing and side dishes. I've always pictured uh, macaroni salad, potato salad, I mean, coleslaw, strawberry pretzel salad. So, but uh, so, huh? Speak louder, but uh, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have that ready, and uh, the grill is gonna be ready to grill again, and uh, just the general outdoors. And if the weather is nice enough, the kids, uh, my kids, have been asking, when do we get to eat outside again at the church? So if my kids will help me set up the tables and chairs, we could probably com uh, commit to eating outside. I've got one gazebo. Uh, we can set up, and I think Ruth can bring up one if you're wanting to uh, sit in the shade a little bit, or if you're going to rebel and sit inside, that's fine too. We're just going to have both options open, and uh, looking forward to that. And number 368 this time, we've been working on 366, but 368 made the list, and this was the special Miss Springer, my wife, sung uh, last week. So we're going to learn and uh, make this part of our repertoire. How's that feeling? 368. Uh, some of you turned in the pages too. Let's sing that first verse one more time and then we'll go to the second. Caleb hit the high note a little soon though. So, uh, and number 368. Good. So be uh, studying that, looking at that, and how do you do that? Honestly, uh, a lot of these songs, if you look and uh, you search hard enough, there's 
uh, versions of them on YouTube. And sometimes they're not with a church of like faith, but uh, those are old enough. Nobody's making a rock song version out of, out of songs like that. So I encourage you to look them up and uh, learn them. And uh, we will continue to practice. Praises. Any praises? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. Yes, Jason. Saturday, he gets the leave to go to Ohio with grandma and grandpa and then see my mom and uh, possibly my dad. So, yes, sir. Pap Pap is better. My mom is better, had the surgery and uh, is home and uh, doing well. So thank you for the prayers with that. And uh, I've mentioned it a few times already, but it was good to see the Lipscomb family. Um, when I was uh, first on the bus, um, I was telling Tom earlier, it was kind of odd. Um, I was first saved, but within a year, uh, maybe even less than that, knowing grandma and grandpa, we were running games and passing out cookies and grandma and grandpa got you involved right away on that bus. And uh, the Lipscombs uh, were part of the bus ministry, drove for a while, I think. It was the substitute driver. He runs milk runs. Uh, the, uh, the people that used to run, that's what he did for a living. So uh, picks up milk from the Amish. Once a year around October with all the goings on that would associate with October, he had spent $10 on this ugly, I mean hideous, orange suit. And he would get a pumpkin that was big enough to bore out, clean out, and put his head in. I mean, literally, and... On everybody came. That was one of the high days of the attendance. The same pumpkin. See, and you think I'm weird. I get this naturally. I, I'm just amalgamating all of these things I've learned that have worked. And he'd be scary, Tom. He'd be driving a 55 passenger bus in, right, out, right, up, right, down, right. He'd turn around, bus doing 55 mile an hour, going happy all the time. We're like, Mike, just drive. <laughs> right. But uh, he was up here, and it was good. Uh, as humbly as I can put it, to be able to show somebody that invested in me fruit of their investment, if I could, if you understand how I'm wording this. So uh, that was good to see Mike and uh, Joette Lipscomb yesterday. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Sure. And um, today, last weekend today, all I did was show the pictures, and they told the story better than I did. They remembered everything. Good. And I was so proud of them. And then, as you know, they get candy after they answer questions about the story. Nah. And, <laughs> and um, several times in the past few weeks, Maybe Jackson has taken a kind of candy and someone else says, oh, I really wanted that. And they will trade. They will give up the bag they chose. Good. And give it to somebody else. And I'm like, 
You guys, that is so being kind to each other. Yes. That's what you're supposed to do. I know you really wanted that. Right. Because somebody else did. And you guys are raising great kids. Praise the Lord. They are, they impress me every week. Praise the Lord. Thank you for letting me break on. My pleasure. My pleasure. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. And I called them, called the Harrises, and I just want to give the general announcement, should there ever be another tornado, earthquake, fire at your house. I called Eric shortly into that day, and I said, how you doing? He said, without power, there's gas leaks. I said, I want you to know the parsonage is where we live. It's the church house. There's a spare bedroom. We would clean the shower. I can't guarantee my teenage boy's shower would be ready. But by the time you drove down, we would make sure it looked like a clean shower. But uh, for, that goes for anybody in the church. Preacher, my house just caught fire. What am I going to do tonight? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, figure that stuff out. So... So we'll we'll figure it out, and I mean, especially if you can leave safe and you're the type that has a camper, we've got camper hookups. We've got ways to deal. So, uh, but yeah, praise the Lord, it didn't hit your house. Could have just miles is that's too close. So, going once, going twice. Proverbs four. Proverbs 4, and uh, getting this series, using the outline of this series, it's going to be beginning of a thought. This is going to be a 10-week series on uh, Sunday afternoons, at least 10 weeks, take us through the summer-ish uh, with different things. And uh, Don Sisk was a missionary to, I think, China for a long time. He was associated with West Coast Baptist College. Uh, Pastor Paul Chapel out there, and once again, like you heard the uh, disclaimers with the Schofield uh, reference Bible this morning, I do not, uh, I'm not aligning myself uh, completely with uh, the ministry out there. I think there's something Paul Chapel's that that Paul Chapel has done very, very well, and I think he's gone very liberal in some areas as well. So uh, I, I put it out there. Uh, but even a, a, a broken clock can be long, wrong at least twice a day. Uh, he's put some produce out, uh, produced some good stuff. And one of the books his ministry produced years ago was uh, Principles to Live By by Don Sisk. It's a short read. I mean, the book's even this tall. So um, if you ever come across the book, excellent book to read. Uh, that's the outline of the series for the next 10 weeks. And as I preached a couple weeks ago, I want our church not only to know doctrine, but uh, basically, or to be able to basically read the Bible at a base level and to associate that and to understand that this is how that applies to my life. God didn't give us some highfalutin, high language King James Bible to confuse us. No, he wrote us a love letter, a book to say, hey, I want you to have the best life. I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So uh, for the next 10 weeks or so, as the Lord leads, we'll be going through uh, principles for biblical living as the series will begin. And it will begin reading in Proverbs chapter number four, verse number seven. And this is going to be the theme memory verse area. If you're ever into, uh, if, and everybody should be, if you are still trying to memorize scripture, I would like you to memorize these three verses if you can. Okay. And just, just thinking about it now, Jason, Jackson, Ethne, Matthew, any of the normal kids ish in the church. 
if you can come up to me and memor have memorized three, three verses of the Bible, I will go to the grocery store and buy you a king-size candy bar. Okay, Jason? Okay. Proverbs 4 and verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Principles for living. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for uh, these principles. Help me to teach them and preach them well over the next 10 weeks. Help your people to live by a basic principle of life. In Jesus' name, amen. That was the introduction. Today is, today is going to be the first of 10 principles we're going to learn. And this is the principle. Relationships are more important than fame or things. Relationships are more important than fame or things. Matthew 6, 19, once I start it, you'll all be able to quote it with me very likely. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust dust corrupt, and where thieves do break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break forth nor steal. For where your treasure is, finish it, there your will be also. Okay. Principles we're going to go through, and there's a couple of them. Principle number one, your relationship with God. Moreover, not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Okay. I'm preaching to the church, and church, you're going to hear me repeat this all the time, give salvation messages even to you in the pew until the Lord takes me home or moves me on. I've been in church after, I mean, a couple of church services, and I've heard even more where uh, the preacher has been saved, the deacon's been saved, Sunday school teachers have been saved, being Sunday school teachers for years and years in their church. I don't ever want to assume that the crowd I'm speaking to is born again, nor church am I trying to talk you out of it, okay? I'm not trying, I'm just trying to establish I am born again. That's the primary principle the primary relationship, the most important relationship you can ever have is with Jesus Christ, with God. Uh, I've used the analogy before. Uh, uh, my wife and I, our senior year of my senior year, her fourth year of uh, college, because um, you got your program in five, changed halfway in between. She didn't fail out anything. She just changed her focus. And uh, we were about to get married, and man, we were fighting like cats and dogs, and uh, a little bit, anyway. Doc Crowley pulls me over and says, you seem upset. I said, yep, that's it, I am engaged, and I think the relationship's over. She's like, what? I think the relationship's over. I'm like, so, this, I think it was went some, I mean, Doc way. When you go on dates, what do you talk about? Um, I don't know. Video games and TV and date stuff. Do you ever read the Bible with her? Huh? Do you ever pray with her? What are you talking about? Aren't you a Christian couple? Yeah. But you never pray together? And then he drew a triangle. And it, you, you might have seen this principle before. It said, you, I mean, 
tr normal triangle, point at the top to the other side to the bottom. Say Betsy's over here, Jason's over here, and God's up here. Your focus is not Betsy. Her focus is not you. Both of your focus needs to be God. And this is good marital counseling for you folks that are paying attention too. He said, guess, guess what? And the way he drew the triangle, if you and Betsy start getting closer to God, guess what will naturally happen? You'll start getting closer to one another. So your primary principle relationship, church, your main focus is not your kids, is not your spouse, is not your boss. And we're going to focus on all these in here. The first and number one focus that we need to have in our lives, the greatest relationship we need to have is with God. Having a salvation relationship with the Lord is the most important thing. Number two, salvation is only the beginning. Don Sisk, the gentleman that wrote the book, salvation is a glorious experience. However, it is only the beginning of a wonderful relationship with God. Make your relationship with God your first priority. Psalm 46 and verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. It cannot be preached too much. Our relationship must be with Where do you run to? It's obvious, even on a Sunday morning, Brother Tom, I, I had forgotten my tithe. This is why I initially left your Sunday school class. Again, I forgot it for the second week in a row. So I went home and got it, sat in the back. And I noticed even on a Sunday morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, you're hearing already ATVs and uh, dirt bikes and things fly down the road. Because that's their refuge. The alcohol, the drugs, the music, the entertainment, be it whatever it is, for, for much of the world, that's their refuge. That's their strength. That's how they relax. It should not be true of the Christian. Romans 10, 17, So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the... So if you have a proper relationship with God, you will have a proper relationship with the Word of God. If you do not have a proper relationship, if you're not properly reading the Word of God, I will just say it very frank, your relationship with God is not proper. I still pray to Him. Well, you're still saying words. You need to be praying, you need to be reading, you need to be regularly reading, daily reading. The Bible even says morning and evening and at noon will I pray and seek God's face. Sunday, or five days a week, out of seven, because we know they're getting the Bible on Wednesday night at um, here, and Sundays they're in church all day. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at family dinner. My kids will remind us now we're not allowed to get up until mom or dad has read the devotion in the Bible. Thanks for the compliment, but counseling, that's how you get good kids. Amen. They're trying to be biblical. They're based on the word of God. Their faith is there. They trust in there. And they go through storms. I mean, good night. I've got, I mean, two of my kids have been epileptic. Both of them having seizures. Believe it or not, Jason used to. You don't think my kids have gone through storms? Couple of moves, houses moving up here. We go through, the preacher goes through the same thing you does. What's our faith based on? The Word of God.
your peace. Where's your peace from? Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God with passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When we pray, when we get to Him, when we have that relationship with God. Pray for me, and I don't even care. He sees it. I had the opportunity Thursday to be a blessing to Cheryl and Ralph Berriulo. Uh, he, if you know him, it was kind of funny. I knocked on the door, and uh, we're fine. Thanks for visiting. We're good. I said, okay, Cheryl. Can I have 30 more seconds? Sure. Can I mow your lawn? <laughs> and that was a blessing. But uh, Ralph came out. He had a business to take care of Petoskey. Preferably, I'll get to spend some time with him. Monday is the plan. He's going through it, not planning on taking treatment. We know what the end of this is going to be. Rise of right now, he's pretty level-headed. Yep, this was God's plan. This is how it's going to happen. No different than the rest of the personalities always had in the life. Nothing changed. Next relationship, family relationships. A husband and wife are to set up a home of their own. I have not preached this much. Genesis 2 24. Therefore shall a man and his wife, or a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Here's the principle. Eric, you and I are raising boys right now. It is my job to raise my boys to be able to leave the house about 18, 19, 20 years old. Amen. If possible and be able to raise and have a family of their own i'm raising men i need to witness that i need to help them work through that at 18 it's too late i'm already restoring their principles but it's a leaving father and mother and cleaving unto each other I'm losing the name. Older man at Green Meadow that did the plowing. Leon Hapner. Different generation, but the biblical reason he did it was, was funny but perfect. Him and his wife, they were so cute. His wife passed on a couple of years after we started joining that church. But Leon told the story very publicly. He said, when we first got married, like the first month, him and his wife got arguing about something, and she looked at him, I'm just going to call my dad. And Leon said, no, you're not. Grab the end of, I mean, I'm, he is so old. You remember the days where phones had to be hooked up to a wall? He grabbed the phone wire and pulled it out of the house. All of it. The entire house. And said, you're not calling your dad. I'm your husband. We're dealing with this. And they did, and they had a marriage of 60 years or something. A man shall leave father and mother Cling to his wife. Cling to his wife. That's the important part. They become one flesh. And they figure it out. That's what I'm at least teaching the generation. I realize the group of people I'm preaching to right now, some of your homes have not always witnessed to that. I'm teaching you now, so hopefully you can teach it to your children or grandchildren. Just because a mistake has been made and an instant the circumstance has been true about one generation, it doesn't have to be true about every generation. Amen? Married couples must focus on building their new lives together. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. 
giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together the grace of life, that your prayers not be hindered. Husbands, this is talking about us. I'm to figure out my wife, live with her according to knowledge, and now newsflash. Next year will be 20 years married for my wife and I. Yes, she has put up with your pastor for that long. She deserves a crown. Amen, ladies? But uh, she's not the 20 or she's not the same person I married 20 years ago. We've got four children together now. We've moved 78 times. <laughs> right, honey? Pretty close. Three different states. Ohio, Delaware, Michigan. She's not the same person. Things change. And using it as an analogy, humorous to me, you will notice the 1990s black TV in the tra in the, by the trash over here. That was frustratingly, and here comes another video game story, my pride and joy. But I've learned now for the last year, it's taken too much of the guest room up. It's taken too much of the basement up. And my wife wasn't enjoying it. So I could either be the man of the house and say, deal with it. Or I figured out other ways to play my video games and said, hey, here's the space back. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Figure it out. Siblings, Jason, Jackson, Ethne. Siblings should get along. Beginning with Cain and Abel and continuing through the Bible, I can't think of a single recorded sibling fight that ended well. Now, there have been times I've told my boys, go figure it out. Which may include some disagreements and some arguings and praise God no bloody noses yet but boys will be boys but you've seen them you've praised them most of the time they should be able to get along amen parents that should be the expectation my kids just have a different personality well Help them figure it out. Ephesians 6, children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is the family structure. Children should be made to be obedient. And I use that word on purpose. There are some times my kids can negotiate a little bit. I called my son the other day and said, Jason, I need you to take out the trash. Jad, may I finish the level of the game I'm on and then I promise to take out the trash. There are times I allow that. But sometimes I don't, right, Jason? And that's fine. That's the way I run the home. There have been times I said, no, Jason, you need to do it now. What? I said, now. Amen? Kids are missing that today. Learn to honor their parents. They should feel remorseful if Pastor Chatfield said, I needed to pull Jason into the office today. It never happened, Ethnished. But that should be an embarrassment to them. Both at the school and with mom and dad. Mom, I'm ashamed to tell you I disobeyed Pastor Chatfield's rules today and I got in trouble. Your relationship with your church. We've said a lot, forsaking not the assembling of shelves together as the manner of some is, as so much the more as you see the day approaching. The church is the body, according to 1 Corinthians 12. 
I don't mean to embarrass you, Butch, but life is different with one hand. You cope, but when that happens to the church, it shouldn't. We should all be here. We should be bringing more people here. You should want to come. Quick point on that one. Number five, number whatever I'm on. Your relationship at work. Okay. Just two more, watching the time, and I'm done. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men players, but the uh, servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart with, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. This winter, I was taking Mrs. Dunbar home. And coming back down Trowbridge, which is a wonderful road here in Wonder Wolverine. Oh, yeah. And this day, I shouldn't have even been down Trowbridge. It was icy. It was muddy. And there was this elderly lady that comes out. She's, I mean, struggling to get down her driveway already. And I see her getting ready to cross muddy Trowbridge Road with a cane. I'm being respectful but accurate. So I stop in the middle of Trowbridge Road. I get out. She's like, no, mister, you can go. I said, no, ma'am, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. You're getting your mail, aren't you? She said, yes, sir. I said, no, you're not. I'm now getting your mail. You stay on this side of the road where it's safe, and I'll give you the mail. So I did it, and I stood out there for a minute. Oh, I knew the thinkers. Orville was such a nice guy. I hear it all the time, and I love it. How's Beverly doing? Oh, she's living in Florida. And all of this conversation. And I said, by the way, I'm the new preacher. Oh, you're so nice. And I mean, this 80-year-old talking to her grandson. I can handle it. I love it. And I said, why don't you come see me sometime? Oh, I don't know. My grandkids watch me now my kids watch me now i'm getting older i'd have to check with them i said that's fine why are you saying this last week i was subbing at vanderbilt school and i've subbed there now for the whole calendar year and one of the ladies that work in the office just happened that day to hear me mention to the peers i'm sitting with at lunch Oh, I passed the Wolverine Baptist Church. You said, what? Two things are going through my mind. This will either be good or this will be bad. And she looks at me and said, young man, I got a question for you. I said, yeah. This summer or this winter, there was a white church van that stopped on Trowbridge Road and Help the lady get her mail. Do you happen to know who that young man was? I said, ma'am, that was me. Shock and on a little glassy eye. That was you? I said, yeah. I said, mister, I've watched you all year. I like you. You're a great employee around here. I'm not lifting myself up. All the glory goes to God. You work hard. You've got a good reputation around here. My mother's allowed to go to your church now. If you would work hard at your job, if you would do the right thing at your job, you don't know what the result's going to be. Instead, we hate our stinking job. Stinking boss, stinking would you come to church with me? Your 
You're being watched. You got a mission field. Nobody can tell me what to do. Apparently, not even God is what they're hearing. I'm will. I'm, I'm willing to serve in any capacity. Should be your true at the relationship. Vanderbilt, they'll call me. Christina in the front desk has my number. Hey, preacher, somebody just come in. I know you're already going to be late for school. Can you be here in about a half hour? Yep, I'll be there. Do you mind? I said, Christina, you don't even have to tell what the job is. I'm showing up. I got my book bag ready. We're, we'll sub. We'll do it. Oh, okay. Last one. I'm trying to hurry. Your relationship with the world. Luke 15, 2 is a principle we need to learn sometimes in life. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. I'm on YouTube and I don't want to use the name, but my kids were shocked a little bit. I had some of the trash by the road I was getting rid of, and the one trash moved to the garage because a, a young man from this neighborhood um, knocked on my door and wanted it. Tattoos worldly looking open the door and I call the guy my name and my kids see the physical and they're like you know him yep that is him and I talk about this I've done this and that with them and they're like huh Jesus Christ sat with publican and sinners. Do I like what he's doing? No. Does he know I don't like it? Absolutely. But he's been at the house. I've called them my name. I've, I've tried to help him out. And this winter, it was a little colder. I even offered the coat on my back to this young man. His coat was falling off him. I said, I started to say, Mister, do you need a better coat? He's like, No, no, no. I know what you're doing. I've got a better coat at home. I said, okay. I'm trying to reach Wolverine. Will you catch me at times sitting by the library with a young man that's smoking a cigarette? Absolutely. What should be the problem? It should be the problem if pastor's holding the cigarette. Other than that, what am I doing? I'm ministering. He's got a beard. Yep. He's holding a marijuana pipe. Yep. That's missing at times in our Christianity. Accepting, no. Don't blindly accept their sin, but be willing to associate with them and tell them about the Savior. Did Jesus Christ ever do that? Ah, the woman at the well. Uh, the woman cake taken in adultery. Um, a certain tax collector that was up a tree and you come into my house today. I think he might have done it once or twice throughout Scripture. Yeah. But, then again, I've used the analogy before. I've heard preaching in the name of fundamentalism from my own ear sitting in the pew. I heard it live. 20-something old fresh-faced college kid preacher talking about how he's at Walmart and saw some lady that was modest from head to toe, full dress, flowing, makeup, just picture perfect for the fundamentalism magazine that we all want to be part of. And said, that's the person I need to witness to. That's the type of people I want in my church. Said those words. I'm sorry, sir, in the name of fundamentalism, you've missed the target. If Dr. Al Stone comes and I've got 13 people that smell like marijuana in the church and six of them have light, light, bright orange hair, you know what Dr. Al Stone will tell me after service? Keep up the good work. Amen? Let's all stand.
principles to live by. And that's going to be the example of the preaching you're going to get. What I want you to learn through this and understand through this, the Holy Spirit leading, heads bowed, eyes closed, is to live by a basic principle. To already know what to do. To apply the Bible scripturally. I take a strong stand, and you've heard it this morning, on all kinds of sin. But guess what? The world sins. They don't see a wrong with it. Your family needs to have a head of the home. You, man, you, sir, need to have a good, solid relationship with him. Heads bowed or eyes closed doing business with the Lord. I've heard preachers a lot in the old cassettes I've listened to saying, sure, you can quote the entire book of Romans, but what do you actually know about? You can quote half the New Testament without looking, but you ain't applied it to your life yet. These principles are how do we apply it to our lives. We're standing with heads bowed and eyes closed, doing business.